Hello everyone, my name is Bartomej Galbrich. I work at the University of Economics at the Chair of Entrepreneurship and I would like to draw your attention to my classes on the research and development and innovation management. This is the classes that I touch the problems of innovativeness of organization, of innovation as it is, and of course the process how some companies are growing because of that innovation, how it's happening in that organizations. So that's that's the basics. And today I would like to draw your attention to a small part, small piece of my classes, which is connected with, with innovation, with innovativeness, and what is the role of creativity in that process. Basically, when we think about the creativity, in most of the cases it is connected with, especially in, in the management science, with uh, getting things better. So we think about efficiency, we think about, effic we think about efficiency, Effectiveness. This is what we're thinking about when we think about something new, creative, changing the way we do, uh, changing the, way, the, the, the things that we have done before, uh, we do right now, and the way how we're going to do it in the future. So this is how the creativity is perceived by me during these classes. Of course, this is not the only uh, definition how you can perceive, but okay, for this short period of uh, of uh, our meeting, I would like to to follow this way of this vein of, of understanding. Uh, there are two things that it's worth to remember. First, still people are necessary. I mean, the human is necessary for the creativity process to appear. So I know that there are some uh, some some software, some headwords, uh, which are almost as creative as human. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, actually, we are still better than they are. So that's the first point. When we talk about the creativity, we must remember that the people are involved. The second is connected with, um, with the way how we perceive creativity. It's not always like this, that suddenly we have a great idea and it's going to be implemented. In the case of organization, in most of the cases, it's going to look like it's going to take time. It's going to take some uh, some phases. It is said that for the creativity process, we can at least separate four different stages. What is the beginning? The beginning is quite simple. It's about we start with gathering knowledge, with accumulating the knowledge, with finding the knowledge. Uh, of course, when we are quite young, one of the first way how we're going to get some knowledge is through experience. Just to remind you, your parents who are telling you, don't touch the oven. Yeah. So what you did, of course, you touch and your fingers will burn. So we getting information through the experience. The second stage is connected. We know that there is a possibility for something to create. So it start to incubate and it's called the whole phase incubation phase so it's growing we start to thinking how it could work what kind of technology it could be implemented and so on and so on and then yes we have it. it's called sometimes um, eureka factor or, or phase which is connected with that moment yes i have it but this is just only a part of the of the creativity process. So please remember that that part is only connected. You, you, you cannot say that the creativity is only connected with the Eureka factor. It's just only a part of that. And then we have one more, which is the part that I believe is the most difficult one, the most demanding one, and the one where the most of the very creative processes unfortunately fail which is evaluation and implementation. This is the time when innovation actually appear on the market. There are different types of innovation and different way how we perceive innovation. For those who deal with strategic management, it's going to be more like a kind of catalyst for change. We are changing the way how we do the business. For those who are connected with entrepreneurship, it's going to be like it's a specific function. So we make things better of the uh, qualitative approach or through the qualitative lens uh, because of the innovation. So we're going to make things better because of the uh, new process, new product, new service uh, that is innovative. So we can talk about at least four types of innovation. 
Of course, the most common way is um, somehow connected with, uh, with, uh, with the moment of creation. So we think about the innovation, which are invention. So something that never appeared before, never exists before, that is novel, never used, and then we have it. So this basically means that it's never been before and now we have it. It's like a wheel from prehistoric time. It's like an internet, yeah, closer to us. Uh, the second way how we can perceive the innovativeness or innovation, times of innovation, is actually, is actually an extension. So we have something, a product or service or sometimes a process, and then we are adding or changing some small piece of that, some little thing, and we make those things better. So, for example, in organization, the whole process of, uh, of improvement, the production process, which is based on the Kaizen technology or the Kaizen approach, yeah? this is the way how we make things better, by small pieces, but constantly. This is extension. We adding something. It's like this uh, this uh, mobile phone that I actually talked to, because originally it was just only for communication to talk with others, and uh, right now it's uh, both, yeah, for communication and for and for recording uh, videos because someone has extended the original mobile phone with. The possibility to record movie. The third, uh, the third example of of uh, innovation we call it duplication. So how does it work? We have something that works in a specific area, and we think I can use it probably in a slightly different way in a slightly different area, uh, but it's still going to be more or less the same. It's like the things like like Teflon. Originally made for the spacecraft, for the spaceships, yeah, to keep the crew, to keep the uh, the spaceships uh, safe from the high temperature. Right now we use it uh, for more or less the same uh, purpose, which is to keep our food when we are cooking something to safe uh, to keep it safe from the high temperature as well. So that's the. That's the uh, that's the uh, duplication, and we have one more, which is synthesis. Basically, synthesis means that we have a kind of mix. We are adding a lot of feature to something new, to something that uh, we hope to create as a new that never exists before. We are combining those things. I think it's a it's it's like mobile phone right now. Yeah, we can use them as a still for of course to talk. We can use them as uh, as uh, for the recording. We can use them uh, as uh, as a kind of as a kind of map guide. We can use them to listen to the music and so on and so on and so on. So so many purposes. Why today we have mobile phones? Of course, there are many reasons why some of uh, innovation appears on the market. Some of them is quite simple because of the market because of the needs which are represented by the market. It's just like this day, this this time, this these days when we have the problem with with COVID. Just take a look how many organizations were forced to use uh, internet as a channel for selling. Yeah? Completely different way of, of doing things, of, of different approach. Uh, just like uh, how about the delivery, how about the payment, how long we're going to to wait for the goods to be delivered, yeah. So this is the way how it's going to work. Market is going to uh, to uh, to force us to implement those innovation. But not only we are getting older, so some demographic changes. Uh, we must remember that there are many devices which are going to help the people uh, with some disabilities for for people who are a little bit older than than we are. For example, they work like a watch wrist, uh, uh, which is going to communicate to your doctor, there is something wrong with the blood pressure of your patient, so maybe you should call him, or maybe you should check what is going, what is wrong, or maybe it's okay, or maybe there is something only wrong with the device. So, uh, lots of things going on. What we must remember, 
it's quite difficult to plan exactly what is going to happen with the innovation or when specific innovation appear on the market. It cannot, we cannot say that they are planned. We cannot say that all of them are based on technology. Just take a look. For so many years, we are still looking for a vaccine for an AIDS disease. Uh, for this moment, for this time, we are still looking for a vaccine for the COVID disease. We don't know where it's going to happen. It is said that we're going to have it in more or less a couple of months, but still, are we sure about it? Not really. So we have to think about that. It's not about blue sky thinking. It's not about wishful thinking. It's about planning things. It's about a specific kind of approach that we think that we move toward. This is what we do. And yeah, this is basically what innovation for the most of organizations looks like. So it's a whole process where creativity is involved and there is a result which if it is successful, then the companies can really get a huge amount of money on that. Okay, so basically that was my introduction to my classes on research and development and innovation management. I will be very happy to see you during my classes. Okay, so see you soon. Bye. Thank you.